And there's a better look. We're shattered right here, but you can see the beauty of that brookie. And you can see this rock right here. I stayed low. I crawled out onto it. The run, the hole was up above it. We're reading the water, which is so important because if you're not fishing where there's fish, you're not going to catch fish. That's the kind of gems I'm after. The big old fat lunkers. I mean, look at it. Unbelievable. Just sitting here right now before I start my video and I'm taking it all in. And I'm getting ready to head up this mountain stream and take it all in. Hey everybody, it's Benny P with Live of the Lakes Fly Fishing and I'm out here by myself today on one of the most beautiful streams in northern Pennsylvania and I'm getting ready to go chase our native fish, the native brook trout. This is a passion of mine, I wanna share it with you. I would like to share some of my tips, show you these beautiful fish that are all through Pennsylvania, northern Pennsylvania, and hope to push some of my passion into you and get you outdoors. So follow along as I do what I love to do the most, and that's head up these Pennsylvania mountains and chase the most beautiful gems on earth. Okay, there's the first brookie of the day. I caught him on the Lively Lakes Pink Cadillac. Let's get him back in the water. Pretty little mountain gem to start the season. All right, that's the way to start off the season. I consider this my season. This is my native brook trout season. And you can see how effortless it was for me to reach back, grab my net, pull it out of the net man holster. And then once I released that brookie, it just slid straight back into there. Now I want to go over my flies. Uh, you can see I have a Lively Legs Nymph. This is the pink pheasant tail with the pink legs. And we've noticed that the brook trout absolutely love the color pink. So I'm going to have that fly up top in a tandem rig. And down below is a double trouble in dark natural. And I've caught a ton of brookies on that pattern as well. So let's head back to the water and see if we can hook up with some more of these mountain beauties. You want to talk about a little one, second fish of the day. And look at that little bugger. All right, there's a little cutie. All right, I caught that little, I caught it a cutie up in the, the head of the run. I whipped way up into there and it's hard to believe a fish that small can actually jolt your line like that fish did. And that bugger was on a size 12 double treble. And I want to show you, you can see I took the net off, I netted that fish, and I was able to keep that fish in my net because our nets at LivelyLegs.com have the rubber mesh and the holes are small. So if you're a brookie fisherman like me, those little brookies are not going to fall through your net. All right, two fish in, let's keep heading upstream. Didn't mean to, but I did a little slingshot action on that one. And uh, this one here is caught on the Dark Natural Double Treble. The last two, Dark Natural Double Treble. The first one was the pink pheasant tail nymph. Another absolute gorgeous mountain gem of a fish. Get them back in the water. All right, got my net back in the net man. And you can see this rock right here. I stayed low, I crawled out onto it. The run, the hole was up above it. 
I did not want those fish to see me. That's why I stayed so low. I threw up into it, hooked the fish, brought them into the net, and that's how you have success on these small streams. You don't want to walk straight up to the run or straight up to the hole, stand over top of it and try to fish for these fish because they're very spooky. They're very weary of what's above them. Once again, I'm going to sneak out, stay low, not spook anything that's up into that hole in that run, and see if I can get another fish landed. Oh goodness, that's crazy. Another little one. That one's on the pink, or I'm sorry. Yes, the pink pheasant tail. So two for two right now. Four fish landed. This is fun. And this is another just absolutely gorgeous little brookie. Let's go ahead and get them back in to the water here. And off he goes. A lot of tricky places to try to navigate around and be able to film these fish. And I just came into a spot that looks absolutely gorgeous. Have to get a brookie out of here. Finally hooked up with a, not a big one, but a meteor one, and you can see that is the pink pheasant tail right in the corner of his mouth. And this fish right here is what I call pink belly. Pink bellied brookie, and you're gonna see why when I pull him out here. Look at the pink on his belly. Let's get him back in. Okay, that's three for the pink pheasant tail, two for the double trouble, dark natural. Got to give this one another try. Oh, don't fall, don't fall. I'm glad we didn't. Guess what? Oh boy, the pink pheasant tail has another one in the net. Wait till you see the par marks on this little beauty. This here, now the last one was a pink belly. Look at the par marks on that fish. That right there, that's as good as it gets. And back out into this hole. Well, this spot's been working pretty well. No use leaving a hot spot. Head out and try to get another. Tough to leave a hot spot. And once again, the pink legs are getting the job done gonna get that little dink drop back in and away he goes okay that's enough for that spot and I'm gonna go ahead and give you a better look at this spot 
So it's almost like two runs come together. Let me move the camera up here so you can see better. So what you're seeing here, you see this rock right here. This plunge right here and this run, they're coming down through. This run is leading away. It's also breaking up around this rock and all that water right in between the soft spot. I'm just dropping it into that soft spot and letting it run right down through the middle of that double run and that's where I caught all those fish. Okay, here's a look from up top. That's the run down through there that I just went through. Here's where it plunged down over. Here's the upper part of that run. And look at this spot. Right up above where all these logs are down, we have a nice soft spot. There's a run coming into it. And I need to cast up under that log and I'm gonna find a brookie in there. Okay, I'm set up. I've got the challenge to get a cast underneath that log. And just look up that stream right now. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Look how gorgeous that is. That's the beauty I was talking about right there. I'm not going to zoom in too much because I want to go up here and I want to catch a fish. But I have to stay low. Here's one of the tips. Stay low. Like I said earlier, don't get right over top of the fish. And I'm going to crawl up to this spot. And that's the breaks. Challenge was there, it was fun. I did a lot of things right. Hooked the fish and I just didn't get them in the net. We'll head upstream and get another. Okay, everybody's favorite, the ginormous plunge pool, it creates a big hole. I'm not gonna attack the big hole part first. I'm gonna fish these edges. There's a washout on my side and I'm just gonna zip a couple casts up into this washout, this root system, and see if I can't pull one out before I attack the main part of the hole. I'll get on the other side of the camera for this. And a good sized brookie. I actually caught him more towards the middle of the hole. The washout wasn't as good as I thought. And let's see what this guy took. Let me put the rod in the rod holder. Up, oh, the fly popped out. He took the natural, double trouble. And there's a beauty right there. That's the kind of gems I'm after, the big old fat lunkers. And there he is. That's a nice size one there. Not much size of this little one. Dark natural double trouble got it done. And on that little one you'll see this the trick to me getting that fish was to get way out and I had to keep my one hand on the ground for balance and throw up in on my side of the bank because the opposite side right here it's like straight up and down there's no way to fish it and it needed fish on my side so I Leaned my body out, stayed low, put an arm out in front of me, and reached out there and got that little guy. 
sometimes you have to put yourself in some awkward positions to catch these fish and that's just how it is this is tricky fishing this is native brook fishing and if you get on top of them you're gonna blow up the situation and boom they're gonna be gone Wait till you see this one. Oh man, I am in some canopy right here. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but uh, I had my hands full trying to get into this spot and then to set a hook without catching trees, tree branches was almost impossible. Well, wait till you see this fish. This right here is the beauty of the day. Look at that right on the belly. We'll get a better look. I'll uh, get my other camera out and get a little clip of him going into the water. And there's a better look. We're shattered right here, but you can see the beauty of that brookie. Back down to his hole. Now that right there, to me, that's an unbelievable fish. I mean, the rest of them were a little bit washed out up to this point. I had the pink belly, that one with the unbelievable coin marks on it. But that right there is the kind of fish that puts the icing on the cake to my day. If you haven't experienced blue line fishing, you have to get out and give it a try. I'm passionate about it. I know there's a ton of other people that are. And don't just follow the PA interactive maps that say Class A Wild Trout Waters. I mean, there are a lot of great resources out there, but if you look at a map and you say, you know, I just want to go try this stream and see, go give it a try. You're going to strike out more than you're going to hit. But when you hit a home run like I did with this stream, it is going to be a blessing you're going to have for a lot of years. I strongly encourage you to get out and give this a try. Okay, that was pretty cool. I had to stay stealthy behind these logs. This brookie here, it is like clear. It is one heck of a washed out brookie. I'm gonna check this one out. That one was on the pink pheasant tail. And you can see how washed out that one is. That last one was unbelievable. This one is very washed out. I'll give you a better look as I'm putting it in the water. And there it is. When I say washed out, I'm meaning it's not full of colors. Definitely a beautiful fish. You can see the par marks, the coin marks. And back into that hole, and you couldn't see it. Let me back up here. Okay, here's a better look at the spot. Stream splits up there. You can see that right through there is the stream as well. So it split, it comes down through. And look for these washouts. It hits this bank, it makes a turn. And that's washed out, and that's where that little one was hiding right there, right in that washout. I don't know if you caught it in the video, but I was able to take my net off and leave it right on the side in the water so I could bring the camera over closer and keep that fish in the water the whole time. And on the net man, we have this little D ring right here and a quick clip that comes with our lanyard, and it clips on and off very fast. So if you need to take your net off for any reason, I'll give you an example, like if you have a friend fishing with you and he doesn't have a net and he really needs one and you kind of can't get to where you need to net his fish, you can unclip your net and hand it to your friend. Just like that, right back in the holster and ready to head up the water. we go just dropped a nice little cast up around some rocks this little beauty here came out and grabbed the double trouble here goes a little double trouble eater now this spot I'm going to show you you can see the runs coming down through and it's hitting this tree right here and it's washing that out and it's creating that run to make an S right there you see how that comes down through, washes that out. Gets a little deeper right here, and to me that's very fishy. So I'm going to go out there and try to land a brookie out of that spot.
Okay, that spot was fishy. Keep a spot like that in mind. I had a nice one hooked, went down in the net it. It got off and that happens, but uh, spots like that, they're very fishy. Make sure you fish them. Well, that punch pull just did me some justice, and you wait to see this guy. This fish right here, another one of those absolutely gorgeous red-bellied fish, and he's a little bit darker. This is a beauty. Kind of lost count between the double treble and the pink pheasant tail, but I'd say at this point it's pretty even. Those are two of my favorite brookie flies. And check that beauty out right there. Par marks, red belly, got it all. There he is, and look at that awesome native brook trout. And he goes back down into the cold mountain water, and you can tell and you can see why I'm so passionate about this. Look at these fish, look at the stream, look at the environment I'm in. Plunge pools, long runs, deep holes. This is brookie heaven. Well, this guy sure is a dinker, and he's not falling through the holes of our lively legs net. I just plopped him back in the water, and like I said before, these nets are designed to hold even the smallest brookies, and that may have been the smallest one of the day. Okay, I went ahead and took the net off the net man and put that fish, he's in the water right there in the net, so let's go take a better look at him. Before we do that, how cool is that? I had to cast with, my one arm was on this side, my body was on this side, and I hooked that fish like that, came up over, then went down and got him in the net. And this is a nice sized one. Not a giant, but look how dark he is. Give you a better look at them. That is a nice dark native brookie. And we'll get a better look at them when I release them with the other camera. Well, there's the net tucked into this root system. This bugger's active. Man, that's a nice one. That is a solid brookie. And look, he is dark. I've been sitting here a good 10 minutes and just taking it in, and I'm gonna go ahead and say that last fish I caught 10 minutes ago, that dark brookie, I'm gonna end it right there. That's a great fish to end it on. The sun's gone down, and that means I need to get down off this mountain. 
I hope you were able to see some of the passion that I have for this sport and I hope that ignites something in you as well. I try to do my best to share some tips and most of those tips were reading the water which is so important because if you're not fishing where there's fish you're not going to catch fish. I'd like to thank everybody for following along. Thank you for all the support and until next time best of luck on the water.